So in today's video, we have a dilemma to solve. This is the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro with the eight core CPU and the 14 core GPU, which retails for $19.99. And this is the base model 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro, which retails for $12.99. Now, when Apple announced the configurations for the new generation of MacBook Pro, I noticed a decent number of comments from people who were disappointed. They said, hey, look, I'm spending $2,000 on this thing and I can't even get the full 10 core CPU and the 16 core GPU. What the heck is this? So here's the question that I wanna to answer today. It's, it's twofold. Number one, is the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro a good value? Is it pro enough? And number two, is it worth $700 more than a MacBook Pro with the M1 chip or $1,000 more than a MacBook Air? Today, we're gonna to find out. So this is shaping up to be a pretty epic showdown because the M1 MacBook Pro is a fantastic device and it's a really good value, but this is the new kid on the block with more power, a better display, and a new design. You'd think going from a 13 inch to a 14 inch display wouldn't make that much of a difference, but this is a 13.3 inch display and this is a 14.2 inch display and that extra 0.2 of an inch comes right along the top here. Because Apple has reduced the forehead bezel, they basically just moved the menu bar up and out of the way. So not only do you get a larger display, but more of it is usable. But more noticeably different is the display quality. Obviously we have mini LED, XDR, and ProMotion. This is a killer combination. Now I was checking this out on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but I feel like since this is a different display panel, it would be worth going into a dark area and seeing if the display on this thing can hold up. Now, just before we even start the test, as we're sitting here on essentially a blank screen, I can see a tiny little bit of haloing, a little bit of blooming around the UI elements here, but it's really not that bad. I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as the 2021 iPad Pro, the M1. Let's go ahead and start both videos. Now I should point out that both of these displays are on 50% brightness, but you can clearly see that the 14 inch is much brighter and the blacks are much blacker. I mean, this is an insane contrast ratio. That's what XDR is all about. I mean, this is just a ridiculous test. I mean, oh my gosh. I'm absolutely astounded at how good the 14 inch looks. I, I legitimately think if it weren't for a very few cases where I can see just a tiny bit of haloing, you could maybe fool me in a vacuum into thinking that the 14 inch had an OLED panel. Like, it's that good. And that's a really important distinction because when we're comparing not just this 14 inch to more expensive 14 inch MacBooks, which I'll be doing by the way, so get subscribed. I've got two more of these things on the way but we're also comparing to the physical package of this M1 MacBook Pro, which is fine, don't get me wrong. But once you look at this display, just based on my minimal time with these devices, I would easily say that this display adds an extra $300 in value to the computer. It's that good. But we'll come back to the design a little bit later because I know what you guys are interested in and that's the performance figures. So I've lined up a number of benchmark tests that we're gonna do live as well as some that I'll do off camera and then have results for you a little bit later on. Now the first one that I've got lined up here is Final Cut Pro. Both of these computers have the exact same timeline loaded up. They're both running a 10 minute, 10 bit, 4K, 60 FPS, clip from my Sony a7S III. It's a pretty meaty clip, it's almost 12 gigabytes, and we're gonna see which one can render it faster. All right, so that's one minute. We've got 13% progress on the M1 and 28% on the M1 Pro. All right, we are at the end here. The MacBook Pro just finished at 357. 
The MacBook Pro with the M1 is at 52%. So that's not very close. Okay, so the 13 inch MacBook Pro just finished in eight minutes and 34 seconds compared to three minutes and 57 seconds on the 14 inch. And the really impressive thing, the really crazy part is that this only took seven seconds longer than the full fat M1 Pro with the 10 core plus 16 core configuration. That's pretty crazy. And while it might not seem possible to get crazier than that, it does because this, Base model 14 inch beat my 18 core iMac Pro by 58 seconds. That is pretty nuts. That's a $10,000 machine. This is the base model. That's what happens when you have that dedicated ProRes hardware. Uh, but to demonstrate that even further, I wanna do another test. And that is in DaVinci Resolve. So just like before, I have loaded up the exact same timeline onto both of these devices. This time we're in DaVinci Resolve and I've also trimmed the clip down to three minutes for the sake of time. Let's see which one is going to finish first. I wonder if it's the one that has dedicated ProRes encoders on it. Let's take a look. Take a look at the speed of this progress bar. Take a look at the speed of this progress bar. Curious, isn't it? So we're halfway done on the 14 inch, about 10% done on the M1. Okay, so that's 43 seconds for the 14 inch to finish and the M1 is about a third of the way exported. <laughs> I mean, does it get any more obvious than that? That's a huge difference. And in fact, this is almost exactly the same as the normal M1 Pro with the 10 core plus 16 core configuration. I mean, so far this thing in real world applications has been pretty much indistinguishable from the full thing. And that was a 16 inch by the way too. So whatever thermal advantage is there, this thing doesn't care about it. Now next up, I wanna do a little bit of disk speed test. Why you might ask? Well, that's another advantage for the 14 inch. This thing starts with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. If you equip both of those on the M1, it's already gonna be 1699, at which point it's 300 extra bucks to step up to the 14 inch. I mean, I, we won't come to a conclusion yet, but just think about that a little bit. I would easily say that this display adds an extra $300 in value. So let's go ahead and see if the new 14 inch has a faster SSD than the M1 13 inch. Uh, that'd be a yes. So we're looking at five gigabytes per second read write over here and about 2.2, 2.8 over here. So fast, insane. Okay, so I might not be able to run this right now on the M1 because I ran out of space, but I did run it a couple of days ago and it scored a whopping 24 frames per second. So that is the number to beat. And the number to match is 55 FPS, which is the average that we got on the 16 inch with the M1 Pro. I have to say that's running pretty decently considering that this is the base model. This is also running in Rosetta, keep in mind. I'm hearing fan noise which I have not heard so far from this machine. That's definitely something that we're gonna have to do some investigating on. Fortunately, I have an identical 14 inch MacBook Pro that has the exact same specs as my 16 inch. So that should allow us to figure out how different those two machines are in their thermal performance. Definitely make sure to get subscribed because you won't want to miss that. Ooh, that is very interesting. We got 51 FPS. That's just four lower than what the M1 Pro 16 inch did. So that is super weird. We have two fewer performance cores and two fewer graphics cores. I feel like that should be making more of a difference than it is. I must also say the 14 inch is getting a little bit warm, which is not something that I have noticed yet on the 16. Ooh, this, this video is so far giving me a lot of interesting ideas about what I'm gonna look at in the next video. All right, so next up we have Blender and specifically this one is a pretty quick render. It's the Mr. Elephant EV render. And I've run this on a number of machines. It doesn't take a whole lot of time, but I am interested to see how much better the 14 inch base model is compared to the 13 inch base model. 
Okay, and let's begin. Okay, so the 14 inch took 35 seconds and the M1 took 51 seconds. Once again, a very interesting result and we have significant improvement from the 13 inch to the 14 inch. But once again, this was only one second slower than the full fat M1 Pro 16 inch. I mean, so far, I think we've got two really interesting stories. Number one, this is significantly faster than the M1 MacBook Pro. But number two is that this is insignificantly slower than the regular M1 Pro. So it might seem like you're really missing out on a lot, but are you? Well, to find out, I think we need to run through a lot more benchmarks. Now, I don't have time to do that all on camera. You guys don't wanna see that. So I'm gonna go away for a couple of hours into my little benchmark cave, and I'm gonna just run a ton of stuff on these things. And we're gonna find out once and for all how the 14 inch base model stacks up. So far, quite well. Well, hello, I've emerged from the benchmark dungeon and boy, is it interesting. I mean, this thing is such a good and also slightly confusing machine because in a lot of ways, I can't tell the difference between this and the more expensive M1 Pro. And then in other ways, I can really tell the difference. So, I mean, let's just jump into it. So starting with Cinebench R23 and the multi-core test, we scored 95.79, which is a good 3000 points lower than the full 10 core CPU. Now, as you might imagine in single core, it's basically a wash. 1532 compared to 1533, it's identical. When we move over into Geekbench 5, we see similar results. 9961 in the multi-core compared to 12502 on the M1 Pro 10 core. And then again in single core, we got 1770 versus 1708. In Geekbench Compute, however, we do see a pretty substantive difference. This guy scored 38,876 compared to 41,856 on the 16 core GPU. Now moving on to Blender, we've already run the EV test, which showed that we got 35 seconds compared to 53 seconds, which is a pretty big difference. But if we look at some of the other Blender benchmarks, for example, the BMW render, the base model 14 inch was able to complete the task in 256 seconds compared to the M1 MacBook Pros 316. In the GPU version of the BMW render, we saw 322 seconds compared to 383. Now, Blender is an interesting test because it isn't quite able to take full advantage of Apple Silicon, even though it is now optimized. So it used to be worse, but now it's still not really on the level of, you know, DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. However, there are noticeable gains with the 14 inch and particularly over longer periods of time where you tend to notice these more. So in the EV test, it was a matter of a couple of seconds, but by the classroom test, we're talking about multiple minutes here. Now moving on to some apps that are well optimized, as we saw earlier, the 14 inch absolutely smoked the 13 inch in a Final Cut Pro render. And when it came to exporting, the gap got even bigger. The 14 inch exported our clip in 157 seconds compared to 750 on the M1 MacBook Pro. That is an absolutely massive difference and it's one that you would notice all the time. And it's not just a massive difference compared to the measly M1, but also the beastly 18 core iMac Pro. I mean, this is the entry level 14 inch and it smoked every other Mac that I have ever used with the exception of, of course, the full fat 10 plus 16 M1 Pro. Now moving on to GFX Bench for some graphics tests, which I was really curious about with the 14 core GPU, we had a bit of a mixed bag. So for the Aztec high tier off-screen test, we scored 89 FPS, just 10 higher than the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro and significantly less than the 165 FPS in the 10 plus 16 M1 Pro 16 inch. But then in the Manhattan 1080p off-screen test, we scored 817 FPS, completely annihilating the 384 from the 13 inch and getting quite close to the 16 inch. 
And we had a similar story in the T-Rex off-screen benchmark, 1458 compared to 1579, and absolutely smoking the 656 of the 13-inch MacBook Pro. The Aztec high-tier benchmark seems to be a little bit of a curveball for a lot of the devices that I've tested, but by and large, this seems to be keeping up fairly well with the 16-core GPU, and in most cases, demolishing the M1. And that's a similar story in 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme, where the MacBook Pro with the M1 chip scored 49.77, and the 14-inch scored 91.89. So it's not quite double, which is what we saw out of the 16 core GPU, but it's really close. It's very competitive. And finally for graphics, we have the Basemark GPU test where the 14 inch scored 4418, a little bit more than double the 2205 in the 13 inch MacBook Pro and quite close to the 4883 in the 16 core GPU. And then finally, we have some Rosetta tests to see how well this thing holds up when benchmarking in non-optimized applications. First, we have NovaBench where we saw a score of 2458, which is only marginally higher than what we saw on the 13-inch MacBook Pro. And then over in V-Ray CPU, we scored 6,019 compared to 4809 on the 13-inch and 7627 for the 10-core CPU. So clearly we can see some of the differences between not just the M1 and the 14-inch, but between the 14-inch and the full 10-core CPU, 16-core GPU M1 Pro. Now, so far, I have to say, given that it costs $300 to go from this spec to the full fat M1 Pro, I don't necessarily think that you need to make that upgrade. This is really solid performance. And in most real world cases, you wouldn't even really notice the difference. If you're just trying to do Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, this thing has some serious grunt, thanks to the fact that it has that M1 Pro uh, ProRes encoder and decoder built into it. So I'm gonna be investigating the 14 inch form factor quite a bit. I've actually ordered three of these things. I've got this one, the base model. I've got the mid-tier one, which has the upgraded 10 plus 16 M1 Pro, as well as a terabyte of storage. And then I've also ordered the least expensive M1 Max configuration, the only M1 Max computer that you can get for sub $3,000. And so I think that's gonna be a really interesting shootout. Make sure to get subscribed so you can see the three-way ultimate value champion 14 inch macbook pro competition and as usual don't forget to like comment and subscribe follow me on twitter at luke miani and i'll see you guys in the next one